Dead Rock Chapter 8 is finally out, slightly earlier than last month. The chapter continues exactly where the last one ended. So let's get into it. With you till the day I die. Yakuto, Zaletsia and Honey got separated from Kugar's group who got their hands on Freyer. They are kinda lost in the labyrinth, but to make things worse, Honey tries to smash the bookshelves in hopes to get a shortcut. What backfires on him? Seems like you cannot damage the bookshelves in the labyrinth, because the moment Honey hit them with his hammer, he falls apart. I don't know how does this work, but I think the damage done to bookshelves might reflect on the person who hit them. Regardless, now Team Yakuto is even in a bigger trouble, since his group went from 4 members to only 2 in matter of minutes. It also seems like Honey is actually capable to fix himself from this type of damage, meaning he doesn't actually die if he gets smashed to pieces or sustain any life-threatening injury. I don't know how does his body works, but I have the feeling that his clay doll body might just be a vessel, his actual self might just be possessing it. This of course means Honey could be far more stronger in reality. But one thing is definitely sure, the French lion should be locked up. His behavior kinda reminds me of those Twitter accounts who hard seem for anime characters, like the ones who make that one character their entire personality. Shit, I feel like if I would have called out multiple matuas of mine. L let's just move on before they put me on the stakes and burn me like a heretic. Seems like Kugar is interested in fighting Yakuto, or more like in killing him. I don't know why honestly, he probably doesn't like the way he looked at him, basic anime thug behavior, the guy is probably an enderman or something. Kugar also says that the labyrinth is like his backyard meaning he probably spent a lot of time in it, and clones hope to move around without getting lost. Kinda surprising considering that he looks like a meathead instead of a bookworm. But unlike Kugar who knows how to get around in the labyrinth, Yakuto and Chako are dead lost. Even with Chako pointing out that they aren't in the same location because the books are different, it still seems like if they would have been going around in circles. Chaco even makes a discovery that unlike at the previous location where the books were mystery novels, they are now all dirty books! <laughs> Dead Rock Shul is really built different, they have a wall rated 18 section in their library. Wish my shul had something like that back in the days, best we got was Shakespeare. Unfortunately, Kugar's minions found Yakto and Zaletsia. Unfortunate for the minions! Because Zaletsia basically love lives them. She turns into some black flames and starts throwing them around like the bunch of folders they are. I don't know what were they expecting, honestly. At least they had a point where they realized that they are just side characters. So he'll give them that. Seems like Zaletsia's power is actually quite unique and interesting. Despite she being a black wizard, clearly based on Zeref from Firetel. Her power is actually different from his. Zelizia's power so far seems to be turning herself into black magic, and then creating a bunch of different hands made out of said black magic. She uses these hands to do physical harm to her opponents and to attack from multiple directions at the same time. Zeref had death, life and time manipulation alongside many other magic. Zeref was fucking broken! Zelizia also revealed her black wizard form, and oh boy this looks so damn good. Her black wizard form is clearly based on Zeref and I absolutely love it. Zeref's design was so amazing and seeing Zelizia's take on it is really great. Zelizia is also rocking those black latex under it, what makes it feel unique as well, and smexy. So it isn't just a one to one Zeref outfit but a unique take on an already existing design. I absolutely love how Mashima approaches creativity, but this chapter didn't just show us that Zelizia didn't lie when she said that she is strong, but it also gave us an answer to one of the longest ongoing mysteries of Dead Rock. The answer on where is Mikoto barefoot. Seems like she is barefoot because she is absorbing the power from the ground, so it is more convenient for her to be barefoot. 
Honestly, I thought it is because of Mashima's food fetish, but seems like it actually has a logical in lore explanation. Considering her power works by rising those who are already 6 feet under, her being in direct contact with the ground is actually quite logical. After Chaco beat up the side characters, she figured out that the library is designed to show you the book you are searching for, what is quite convenient considering the sheer size of the library. So if you ask for a location of prayer, the book will give an answer. Yakuto is also fast to point out how the library showed those 30 books earlier, making Zelezia all red and offended. This is so hilarious to me because Zelezia always acts all innocent and British. But the moment she was alone with Yakuto, she was thinking about dirty things. Girl is thirsty! I think she might be into Yakuto or something. I know Mashima said that there is no main female character, but I don't think he said anything about love interest. Woke no, Zelezia might just be after the Dragon Balls. <laughs> God damn it. <clears throat> However, before they could go and find Freya, Kugar appears behind them. He found them the exact same way they were trying to find Freya, meaning Kugar is quite experienced in how the library works. And oh man, he's ready to kill. He didn't came here to waste any time. He came to kick ass and he does so. Kugar easily overpowers Yakuto's dragon arm, sending it flying back. This is the first time anyone actually overpowered his arm. Kugar ain't no joke, Yakuto been shredding all of his opponent, expect God, while Kugar easily just overpowered Yakuto's attack. But Kugar doesn't stop there, he goes beyond, showing us ways he a fearsome opponent. His body turns all red, and he proceeds to ragdoll Yakuto like no one else did before. Bro folds Yakuto like a chair. Kugar beat Yakuto so badly that Yakuto was like, shit, I'm not getting my ass beaten because I got nerfed. This dude just built different. Even Zelezia was like, Yakuto is getting his ass whooped here. Let me jump in to hell. Just for Kugar to grab her and yeet her aside. Bro really said, Bitch, this ain't your business, get the fuck out of here. Bro tossed her away, then went back beating Yakuto. The goddamn disrespect. Zelezia never gonna leave this down. She was bragging about how powerful she was and shit last chapter, just to get yeeted from the conversation in the first serious fight. Sis on fraud watch. However, before Kugar could finish Yakuto, he and pops up and freezes his hand repaying his debt to Yakuto for saving him in the unhealth, and revealing that he and Kugar know each other, ending the chapter on a cliffhanger. Kugar even calls him Young Master, so I think he might be some type of royalty, and Kugar might come from a clan that served his family. There might be some type of other history between the two, but we have to wait another month to find out. Regardless, this chapter was pretty solid, we seen what Zelezia is capable of, we seen Yakuto getting folded, <laughs> and we seen what Kugar's powers are. Seems like he can heat his body up, increasing his strength in the process. This chapter was also good because it partially showed us how the library works. It showed what type of person Zelezia might be, and it showed that even if Yakuto is quite powerful, he isn't the strongest student in the school giving him more room to grow as the story goes on. I can't wait for next month chapter to learn more what is the connection between Hien and Kugar, and where will the story lead. But what do you think? Please let me know in the comment section below. This was Space G, don't forget to subscribe, and see you guys in space. Bye!